How's it going guys? Hope everyone we're doing. Welcome to a new video tutorial from iPinuist. We are going to create a new video tutorial on the series of learning React. So we're going to learn uh, basically about the transition group on React, how to basically apply transitions uh, on, a, on a React ba based rendering. So if you're familiar with React, if you've worked with React a lot, you know that React, whenever it tries to render something, it, it, it just like in mounting from the DOM and mounts again and so on and so forth. So it's basically about removing it from the DOM and then adding the DOM, which basically means you can cannot add the normal CSS transactions or normal CSS animations to the to the elements which is which pretty much doesn't exist on the DOM. On this particular case, we can use the uh, React transition group. Which what the, what does it allow us to do? It just like allow us to animate to add like uh, smooth animation or smooth transactions to our components to our elements and animate them very very easily so i'm just gonna go like walk you through how to use it uh why the beneficial step and and i'm gonna like apply it on a, on a, on a real world example that we have created on the learning react series one thing i want to tell you is you need to go ahead and learn about react if you haven't already so we have like a cool course series you can find the link in the description below so make sure to go ahead and learn it and also we have created something uh, really cool in the last video tutorial about with react which is uh the react login form right here so what we're gonna basically do is just just take this form and animate like as you can see whenever we try to move between the login and the register we simply not well, not doing any transition or something like this what we want is like whenever we try to move from one to another we apply a really really smooth animation a smooth transition like a fade transition or a slide transition to make it like more powerful and more more like live or something like this so you can you can feel that it's pretty pretty good components it's pretty good uh, a styling web page or style web page, you better say. One thing I want to mention as well, if we have added a new feature to the website, so which is the uh, notifications like bill in here, you can find it on the right, uh, on the bottom right corner pretty much. So you can just open it up like in here, it's really nice, uh, smooth. Like this one is using the React transition group that we're going to explain today. So you can just give us your feedback with some stars and you can open in here uh, what what you like, what you dislike about stories, what we can improve, yada yada yada. So you can just give us some hopeful uh, comments in here. And also you can just go ahead and check our Udemy courses. So you probably just go ahead jumping through and learn new things. We have like a 50% coupon code mini rate for you, just for you. It's a special uh, discount thing. So the coupon code, just click in here and it's just going to take you to the Udemy cruise pages. So it's pretty good, pretty nice. Hopefully you can just go ahead and walk you through this. Or you can just learn from the Udemy cruises. Now let's just jump back into our project. So you can as you can clearly see in here, we have a project in here and it's quite basic project. It doesn't have that much of things and I've already gone and installed the, the needed uh, modules for this particular tutorial. So first things first, you need to install the React Transition Group modular for this to work. So make sure to just go ahead npm install, whether you're using npm or yarn, it's quite basic as you know. So npm install react-transition-group and everything gonna be working Find we should save it as a real dependency because it's going to be used like the React core or something. It's not a developer dependency or something. And React Transition Group going to work pretty much fine. So everything will work pretty much fine. After installing it, as I already did, uh, you can just jump into writing the code. So this is the code. If you haven't grabbed it uh, from last video tutorial, it's in GitHub. So it's available for you. You can just go and grab it. Or as I told you before, you can just go ahead and watch the video tutorial. It's quite basic. You can understand the whole thing in here. What we did, it's the link in the description below. So make sure to go ahead and check it out. Now, what we did so far in here is just created, go into the SRC and add a new a new folder in here, which is called transitions. And into this folder, I've added a new file, fade transition. So this is the file we're going to work on, uh, like on our transition. So make sure to, whenever you try to add, let's can see, if you can clearly uh, notice, I've added in here like fade transition to specifically mean that it's going to be a fade transition if you have like another transition called slide transition so we have to add a new file for it and so on and so forth so each transition has to have uh, its its own file pretty much so to do the transition thing now under the, under the file you need to import the transition core so I'm gonna go with import transition from react transition group and forward slash transition so so make sure to go ahead and do this step, uh, especially the forward slash transition. It's very, very important. You can't just import it from the React transition group only. So you have to select the subfolder to better say. And everything should be pretty much fine right now. Let me just go ahead and export uh, like 
you know, we need to create a component for this. So we have to create a component that is going to render this one. So we're going to export defaults and I'm going to create a class as a component. And obviously before doing this, uh, since we need components, we also need React. So we need to import the React library and all of these things. So we could have access to the components. I'm going to call this like the uh, fade transition as, as, the, as we have named the file. So fade transition uh, from or extends so I can't quietly type react.components where is this okay there we go we've got that so now we're gonna have like a constructor as we normally do with the props and everything and this constructor so it's gonna have like this dots uh, or you call the super with the props so to to initialize the super method or the uh, the base class, which is the component, the React component, and we're gonna need two different things. So we're gonna need the default style. The, the style is gonna be like applied by default to the components we wanna uh, like animate, which is going to be. Uh, let me just add the comments. So default style. So I'm just gonna call this dot default style, and I'm gonna add this to to it. So it's going to be an object. So if you're familiar with the CSS, you should probably be familiar with CSS because we're going to apply the transitions using a CSS transition, of course. So it's based on the CSS transition. So this is going to be like a CSS thing. So what we're going to probably do in here is going to say like the, um, as, as a normal CSS, you can say opacity in here is going to be like, uh, on a default style, so the opacity is going to be zero or something. And since we're doing a fading transition, so we're just going to like manipulate the opacity, like playing with the opacity, making it zero and making it one or transition, transitioning pretty much between the zero and the one values. So to make it look like it's fading in and fading out and so on and so forth. So this is the fade transition. So make sure to go ahead, like, I don't know, take a look on how fade transition pretty much works. So just wait till the end and you're going to probably notice or see in action how fade transition pretty much works so this is the default style how the component is going to be styled and we are going to like have an applied style to it so we're just going to be like calling it transition style and we're just going to be like a, a normal style with 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 a specific um an api we're going to use from the transition group right here so <clears throat> the basic thing in here is going to be um I'm going to have like four different states. So the, the, the basic about the transition react transition group, it's working with the state. So we have like entering state, which is an object, uh, like this, this object is going to like represent the style to apply, to apply on the entering state. Then you have the next state, which is entered. So once the component is entered and rendered and mounted to the DOM, this state is going to be called the lot or the third state, which is going to be exiting, which getting out of the component or mounting the component from the DOM. And the last one, which is exited, which pretty much means the, the component has been successfully mounted from and mounted from the DOM pretty much, which means removed from the DOM so we can apply any style. So this is how it pretty much works. If you're familiar with React, as I told you before, the rendering system behind React, what it does is just like whenever you try to remove something or as we are doing right here if we go back to the render so we are like toggling between the login and the register box what we're doing is saying this dot state dot is login open if if this is equal to true we are going to render the login box if the other one is looking like is true we're gonna render the register box instead of the login box so this means we're just gonna like take this one if this is true just take it and mount it to the DOM which basically whenever we apply this transition later on to it what we're gonna do is just gonna like get into to this three or four uh four states so we can animate it smoothly so the entering the entry the existing and the exit so this is how pretty much works the react transitioning group now here we can apply whatever thing let's say whenever we are trying to enter so we're going to say the opacity is going to be zero and on entered so we're going to say also the opacity so this is like a very very basic transition you can have way much more complicated things in here going on in the background and stuff so i'm just going to say the opacity zero then the opacity one whenever we enter it we're just going to like transition from the zeroth opacity value to the one uh or, or like our first opacity value so this is how it pretty much going to work
like from here and you can just go ahead and manipulate the exit and exit for now we're just gonna leave it blank right here so just for explanation purposes I've put it right there and obviously as a normal component we're gonna need a render method to put our render code right, right into it so the code we need to return in order to render the actual DOM so here we're just gonna like return as we normally do and for this what we're gonna need to do is like I'm gonna use this fake transition components the components we've created up here as like a parent component so we can wrap something on it let's say let me just show you an example here we can just go ahead and like use fade transition like this and we can put whatever uh like a div or something like in here like a div and hello world and this div is going to be like you know is going to be uh, the targets transitioning element. So this is element, this dev in here is gonna the the one who's gonna receive pretty much the transition. So it's the targets transition element. So we, this is how what we want. So to do this, we need to use the children. Um, uh, we're gonna like receive children from the React properties and we rendering them back. How we can do this? It's quite basic as well. So the first things first. Whenever you try to return, we need to return the actual transition group, the uh, the main group in here, and the group actually takes two arguments. The first argument is the end arguments. This argument tell it if the uh, the actual components is being rendered or not so this is the boolean it's true or false so we tell it as you remember in here if this is true we render this one if it's false we just like remove it from the dom or uh, do not render it or mount it from a dom this is the same thing so if it's true just gonna like render whatever children comes in inside those two uh, tag elements and if it's false it's just not gonna render in nothing or something and if it's true and false it's just gonna like you know take the uh, like uh, switch between those entering and exiting states and so on and so forth so this is how it depends uh, rather than just using the end operator in here you can just put it in right in here and it's just gonna work for pretty much fine and also you're gonna need like a timeout thing this timeout is gonna represent uh, the duration of the actual transition how, how many duration you want or the, the actual duration time in milliseconds or whatever you specify so we're gonna talk about this a little bit so I'm just gonna like use this or grab this from the properties I'm just gonna call this a duration so we need to access duration and also this one we're gonna use it from the properties just gonna like props dogs is open is open is like uh, way much more better variable notation thing so uh, anyone can and can understand it and pretty much read through it and understand the actual functionality behind it so here we've got the transition as I told you now we need to render the actual thing so the transition what it takes it takes a function so what do you mean by a function a function takes a state as an argument or pretty much a callback that gonna like return us the currently rendered state or the currently being rendered state so whenever like moving from the entry into the entered this state gonna change it for to ent entered uh, if we are in the exiting state this one is gonna be exiting and so on and so forth this is like pretty much a normal string so what we are gonna need to do here as well is return something to it specifically to the state so depending on this state we're gonna return the style applied to it so if we are in the entering we're gonna apply this title the children elements if we are in the uh, entry we're gonna apply this one this particular one the opacity one the style to the uh, to the actual children that we have got and so on and so forth this is how we pretty much gonna apply it to the actual children so to do this uh, we're gonna first need to like before returning here let me just go ahead and check the state because this is like very uh, very very important so we need to check if it's exited just re return all to make sure that's gonna return or render nothing so returning all you're telling react that do not render anything to to the DOM or, or whatsoever so no rendering at all and also if we if, if it's rather than exited any other states can do the job now we can just go ahead and loop through the children so react have a very specific uh, weird like API that you can use to the children are gonna be re receiving using this dot perhaps so you can access this dot perhaps dots and you can find the children it's gonna be like a, a special react collection it's not an array or something it's special react collection holding all of the children you're gonna pass in whatever you try to render as I told you before what as I showed you with the dev uh, example and a couple of seconds to go so here what you can do is using the react API so you can access react dots children and you can say the map function the map function just allow you to like 
uh, loop through the array or the collection of children so we can use the the specific this one you can't use the one uh, on the children itself because it's not an actual react it's a collection react special special collection so here the first one the first argument it takes is the actual children the second one is going to be the callback the first one takes is a child the second one is the index of the child so a zero zero based index pretty much and here you go so here you need to like loop through each element and return and another element with an applied style the the style is going to apply in is with the uh, currently uh, running state so if you are in the entry you need to apply the style of the entry if you are entered you need to apply the style of the entry with an opacity one and so on and so forth this is how you can do it and you can like distinguish between which state you are in using the state callback you have got in here so everything is being decided for you and everything is tied up for you if you find this a little bit like confusing and stuff you can just go in and copy this change the style right here and everything gonna pretty much work for you for the transition group then you can just put the transition as a parent put it whatever child uh, on it the in property and you're gonna have, you can get actual transition group or a CSS transition on the actual react now the last thing we need to like return and apply the the current style to the actual child child that here since here we are looping so we can access one single child from the collection now to do this we're going to use the react clone element uh specific function what does this function do let me just go ahead and like go to uh, the react top label api i really recommend going have reading through this so you can see clone elements what it does clone and return a new react element using elements as a starting point the resulting elements will have the original element properties with new props merged in. So what we're gonna do is uh, the elements we're gonna return, it's just gonna like keep its property, its own property, its original property is gonna be kept for it. But what we can do is just merge new properties to it. This is how we're gonna do. So the property is gonna hold the style and this style is gonna be merged with its style so we can apply the style. So the new style or the new merger style is gonna be like uh, overrides the uh, the default style or the default props. So this is how the clone in React element works. The first argument it takes is the actual child we want to clone. The second one is going to be an object, and this object is going to hold the actual style. So you can put in here styles you can see, and the style is another object, so you can just apply to it. Well, in this particular case, what we want is to use the objects. Um, well, object dots. Uh, let me just go ahead and see while the object is not predefined and here let me just remove the object so what we want is to grab the actual thing so we can use the object.assign method the object.assign method what it takes it takes a target and a source and I like merge them together so whatever you give it like the targets uh, it's going to return the target pretty much in like several sources like an array of sources it's just going to take all of them merge them together and return to you a brand new object so we want to return a new object in here and uh, the, the other source we want to grab from which is this dot default style so we want to override the default style with the current style which we can access this dot uh, transition style and the transition style remember it's an object with another object like uh, a nested object so we, we, what we want is to access the current state and grab the object of it the current style object of it so so we want, we want to just pass in the state in here, just gonna return us either entering or the entered or whatever objects style we, we wanna grab from it. So here, everything should pretty much work fine. And yeah, everything here, it, it might seem a little bit confusing. It might seem a little bit like, uh, I don't know, uh, very hard for you to understand, but it's quite simple. You can just go in and read through it or in here, walk through it basically in here and just try to figure out what it is and just try to like, Search for Google with the object or sign, reach the clone elements, read more about it, uh, try to understand it better, and everything hopefully should be like illuminated for you as soon as possible. So that was actually for the faint transition that we need to apply. One other thing we need to like think about in here, this default style. So we need to apply this CSS transition right now. For the CSS transition, we need to like to tell it uh, a transition property. So we need to say which transition property. So transition uh, property, okay, the transition property we know effect, it is the opacity and the other thing is going to be like the transition and for the transition what we want and here I'm going to use like the compiled strings and for this transition I'm just going to give it this dot duration, so props dot duration and I'm going to give it in milliseconds and obviously I'm just going to use the ease dash in 
uh, dash out. So yeah, quite basic, and quite simple. And let me just go ahead and get rid of this because this is gonna be applied during the transition styling thinking here. All we need to do is just like tell it which uh, transition property we need to manipulate and the actual transition uh, property with the timing function and the, the actual timeout and everything. Those are specifically for the CSS uh, transition properties. So you have to take them out before like you can understand them better or something. So this is all we're going to need to do for this. Um, I basically, as you can see, it's quite simple. So now we're going to the our render right here and let me just go in and import that. So as you can see in here, also important the transition group, uh, which basically going to work for you if we try to do another thing. But in this case, uh, it's just going to work for us fine. Uh, we only need the transition without the transition group. And we recommend going and checking the documentation. Now, let me just go in and import the transition that we have created. So, import, uh, let me just fade transition from going back once, I think. Um, go to the src forward slash transitions fade transition. And here we go. So, we've got the actual transition component. Now, we need to render the actual transition components. Now, whenever you also can see here, whenever we try to render the login box, let me just get rid of this, get rid of the curly braces uh, on the React. And what we can do is like wrap this into the actual fade transition uh, parent. So, the fade transition is going to be the parent, and we can wrap this around it. So, remember, we have the is open uh, property in here that we have specified, which is true. True or false, and we can like do this dot state dot is login open. So if it's login open, this transition is gonna work, and it's just gonna like fade in the login box. Else, if it's not, it's just gonna like fade it out or something, or never render it uh, anyway to the to the actual dot. Let me just go ahead and copy this one as well, and put it right down here, and I'm just gonna say is register open. Um, register open and I'm gonna say register box right there and here when you need to apply the animation you're probably gonna need to like uh, like assign the class box container under that uh, like before rendering the actual login box and the register box so since we're where we put in them like up here we're saying div and saying the box container it was like up here holding the whole the both of them like the register and the login box were both child of this box container so you should move each one it depends to lead to its own those are like a really bad bug that we that we did in the last video tutorial when we created this login for slash uh, register box but now it's fixed so make sure to put it right there also put these open state dot is login uh, uh is login open which true or false the boolean of course and of course here we've got the duration the duration which is i'm just gonna put like 500 milliseconds to make it like looks a little bit better uh like the fade gonna take uh, the fade in whether the fade in or fade out gonna take 500 milliseconds i told you this is a millisecond so not seconds and you can just put it wherever value right there. Also, one other thing I made uh, changes to is the actual transition itself. So I got into the entered state uh, on the transition style objects and I made this one, like I added the transition delay. Why we did that or why I did that in particular because uh, when you have, in, in this case, when we need to change from the login box to register box, like moving back and forth between them and vice versa, so you're gonna find it a little bit glitchy and, and then you're gonna have like a very very weird uh, animation like something pops in into the other one like the uh, let's say you want to move in from the login to the register so the register animation gonna start at the meantime the login uh, login animation doesn't actually quit at the time so you have to delay the starting of the the next animation before the other one exits and so on and so forth so you have to give the the animation you're currently on a little bit of time to exit so the other one should have a delay to start and so on and so forth so this is how you probably should put it in right in your code uh, right here in the transition delay and as I've told you before you're gonna need to know a little bit of CSS uh, transition properties and how to work with them how workarounds because this is all depends on CSS and the CSS transition properties and you have to know how to manage them and manipulate them and, and, and to create your own animations uh, from your own thing so now just jumping right into the code right here or the actual preview in here and after refreshing everything and and we've got the final demo right here so let's try to move from the login to the register just move right in here and as you can see we get this really 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 nice smooth animation from moving the login to the register or vice versa from the register to the login we get this really nice 
uh, like fade in and fade in and and fade in out and so on and so forth so this is it so you make make sure to put right this one and, and everything should look pretty much fine for you so thank you guys for watching as i told you again make sure to go ahead and check out the website leave your feedback why not and i'll be very very grateful for all of the things so thank you guys for watching as we can said again i said it three times but no problems see you all guys in the next video tomorrow.